Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE biology lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 16.1 asexual reproduction. As always we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. For topic 16.1 you need to describe asexual reproduction, identify examples of asexual reproduction and for extended discuss the advantages and disadvantages of asexual reproduction. Reproduction is the production of offspring or the process of making more of the same kind of organism. There are two types of reproduction that you need to know about, asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. So asexual reproduction is a process resulting in the production of genetically identical offspring from one parent. No gametes or sex cells are produced and there's no mixing of genetic information, meaning the offspring are genetic clones of the parent. Let's take a look at a few examples. So bacteria reproduce by cell division, otherwise known as binary fission. The cell divides producing two exact genetic copies. Fungi reproduce asexually by releasing spores which are dispersed by the wind and develop into new hyphae when they land on a suitable substrate. Hyphae are the branching filaments that make up the mycelium of a fungus. Although all flowering plants reproduce sexually which we'll return to in topic 16.3 many also have asexual methods. Vegetative propagation is the formation and growth of a new plant from a fragment of another, like the root shoots and leaves. Some plants, like the strawberry plant, produce long shoots called stolons, which grow horizontally over the ground. New plants grow from buds on the stolons, which eventually wither and die, leaving an independent plant genetically identical to the parent. In plants, like grasses and ferns, horizontal stems called rhizomes grow under the ground. New shoots develop from buds on the rhizomes and become independent plants when the connecting rhizome dies. In potato plants, rhizomes swell up and form tubers. If a tuber is left in the ground, new shoots and roots grow from its buds using food stored inside the tuber. In bulbs, like those of the daffodil, a secondary bud called the lateral bud develops inside the parent bulb during the growing season. During the next season, the new bulb grows into an independent plant. Now, in addition to plants, some invertebrate animals are able to reproduce asexually. In the pond-dwelling hydra, tentacles grow outwards from the column or central stem. These new hydra eventually break away from the column and in doing so become independent organisms. Okay, so that's everything for core, but for extended, you also need to be able to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction in plants is typically a quick and energy efficient process as no mate is needed or gametes produced. This benefits crop production, increasing yield and allows species to establish large populations in the wild. It also ensures that organisms can reproduce and survive in habitats where mates or pollinators are scarce. With asexual reproduction all the characteristics of the parent are passed on to the next generation. This ensures that beneficial traits are retained so the next generation is well suited to its environment and that crops all have the same desirable features. When plants reproduce asexually they grow in dense colonies as there's no mechanism for dispersal. This may be an advantage for a species in the wild as it leaves little room for competitors. In addition many plants that reproduce asexually like the potato plant store large quantities of food. This allows the plant to grow rapidly, flower and and produce seeds before it needs to compete with other plants for resources. The main disadvantage of asexual reproduction is a lack of genetic diversity. In a changing environment, a species that reproduces asexually may be unable to adapt to the new conditions due to a lack of variation in characteristics. This also means that a disease or parasite that affects one individual is likely to spread throughout the entire population. Finally, the lack of dispersal associated with asexual reproduction in plants can result in excessive competition for water, light and nutrients. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 16.1 asexual reproduction. If you enjoyed this video I'd really appreciate your subscription and I'll see you next time for topic 16.2 sexual reproduction.